you have to learn not merely to survive, because that's easy, isn't it? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for influential Hispanic Americans who made history. Don't leave the room, don't sit down, and don't, don't keep quiet. You see him run, you see him hit, and you can just tell he had a swagger. But until today, I had never seen you. For this list, we're looking at notable leaders, entertainers, and journalists from across the U.S. who are of Hispanic descent. Since narrowing down our selection from the vast pool of talent was already hard enough, we'll be focusing on individuals born during the 20th century. Which of these gifted luminaries inspires you? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Jorge Ramos Since 1987, this fearless journalist has served as the anchor of Noticiero Univision, currently the most watched Spanish-language evening news program in the U.S. Over his decade-spanning career, Ramos has pitched hardball questions to numerous presidents, reported on the ground from five wars, and won 10 Emmys. As you're saying, you always had the legal authority to stop deportations. Then why did you deport two million people? Uh, Jorge, the, the, uh, we're, we're not, we're for, not gonna... for six years you no, did it. You destroyed than Jorge, many families. Jorge, uh, they we're, we're, the deporter in uh, chief. I, I... Born in Mexico City, he immigrated to the U.S. in 1983 due to censorship. In addition to his regular evening gig, Ramos hosts a Sunday morning political talk show and writes a bilingual newspaper column. Millions of people rely on his fiercely honest reporting. La neutralidad muchas veces es una excusa que usamos los periodistas para escondernos de nuestra verdadera responsabilidad. ¿Y cuál es esa responsabilidad? Cuestionar y desafiar a los que tienen el poder. Para eso sirve el periodismo. Whether he's advocating for immigrant rights or castigating the Catholic Church for covering up abuse, Ramos doesn't back down. But I think it is not only acceptable, but it is my responsibility, my obligation to present that point of view of the immigrants to the rest of the country. And that's exactly what I've been doing. He also founded U.S. Spanish language TV's first book club, Despierto Leyendo, Wake Up Reading. Number 9. Rita Moreno This legendary performer was born in Puerto Rico on December 11, 1931. Five years later, she and her mother moved to the U.S., where Moreno snagged her first voice acting job at 11, her first role on Broadway at 13, and her first gig in Hollywood at 19. She was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President George W. Bush in 2004 and the National Medal of the Arts by President Obama in 2009. The Library of Congress has called her a living legend. Her breakout role came in 1961 when she was cast as Anita in West Side Story. The performance earned Moreno an Oscar, making her the first Hispanic woman to win one. I like to be in America, okay by me in America, everything free in America. Over time, Moreno also earned an Emmy, Grammy, and Tony, becoming only the third person to win all four awards. Moreno continues to act and appears in a remake of West Side Story, released in December 2021. Life matters even more than love. Number 8. Gloria Estefan The future superstar was only two when her family fled from Cuba to the U.S. in 1959. While a student at the University of Miami, the CIA tried to recruit her. But luckily for fans, she instead accepted her future husband Emilio's invitation to join his band, which then changed its name to Miami Sound Machine. I didn't like being the center of attention, so the last thing oh, I wow. thought was that I'd join his band, but I did for fun because music, I, I sing since I talk. Mm -hmm. So I think we were destined to be together. The group's early albums were in Spanish and did well in Latin America, though they proved to have mass appeal with the releases of their first two English albums, Eyes of Innocence and Primitive Love. Estefan eventually became a successful solo act and continues to record music to this day. Today, the charts are filled with Latin artists, but with over 70 million albums sold around the world, none have ever been bigger than Gloria Estefan. She also began a successful career as an actress, most recently voicing a character in the animated film Vivo. I am here, just on another show. Always in your corner, watching you soar. Number 7. Jennifer Lopez 
before becoming an icon, J-Lo was just a kid from the Bronx with a dream. It's no accident she's achieved so much success. She had lofty goals right from the start. Her Puerto Rican parents supported her ambitions by enrolling her in dance lessons when she was five. However, when Lopez dropped out of college to dance professionally, her mom stopped speaking to her for eight months. In 1991, Lopez scored a job dancing on In Living Color. After that, her acting career gradually took off, until her breakout role as the titular singer in the 1997 biopic, Selena. Maybe I just feel like I could do anything. I want the whole world dancing to my music and wearing my clothes. Two years later, Lopez released her first studio album. Since then, her films have grossed over $3.1 billion, she sold tens of millions of albums, and she's been heavily involved with a number of charities. For over 20 years, Jennifer Lopez has been an entertainment megaforce. And as she moves into the next chapter of her career, there's no signs of slowing down. Number 6. Lin-Manuel Miranda Alexander Hamilton My name is Alexander Hamilton and there's a million things I haven't done But just you wait, just you wait When it comes to rapping about U.S. founding fathers, no one holds a candle to this multi-talented son of Puerto Rican immigrants. Miranda started writing In the Heights, a musical based on his New York City neighborhood, while a sophomore in college. And, and I just kind of was writing what was missing and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to write musicals starring Latinos, telling different stories and, um, I, like, and here we are 20 years later, right? And now I'm on The Tonight Show talking to you. Upon graduation, he revamped and expanded the story, which made it to Broadway in 2008, with Miranda himself playing the lead. Practically everybody's stressed, yes! That same year, Miranda came up with the idea for a musical about Alexander Hamilton. In 2015, Hamilton opened to wide acclaim, turning Miranda into a household name. Since then, he's worked on more than a half dozen projects for Disney, as well as many others. You'll find your first impression was mistook. Miranda's directorial debut, Tick Tick Boom, Hit theaters November 2021. Number 5. Roberto Clemente Nicknamed The Great One, this Hall of Famer was as exceptional off the field as he was on it. Born in Puerto Rico and partially of African descent, Clemente faced discrimination when first joining the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1955. A brilliant outfielder with a rifle arm, Clemente was often dismissed as a hot dog. And when he missed a game, he was called either lazy or a hypochondriac. What also stung deep were the constant lampoons of his broken English. He stood tall in the face of this mistreatment and was a strong advocate for other Latino and black players. Clemente also did lots of charity work, which included personally hosting free baseball clinics for young Puerto Ricans. There was a largeness about Clemente's persona that transcended baseball. Not only was he a great player, obviously, but one of the good people who was using his stature and his celebrity to help the people from which he had come. Tragically, he died in 1972 while trying to deliver aid to victims of an earthquake in Nicaragua. Though efforts to canonize him never came to fruition, this hero's incredible accomplishments as a ball player and humanitarian live on. Roberto Clemente's legacy is not only being one of the all-time great players, but being one of the all-time great heroes. It's a wonderful legacy. I think he's one of those people that when you say Roberto Clemente, you smile. He just, hey, he was great in so many ways on and off the field. Number four, Richie Valens. In 1941, Richard Valenzuela was born in Los Angeles. The son of Mexican immigrants displayed an affinity for music from an early age. Energy, good grief. You listen to that, it's just filled with that youthful energy. Richard's father cultivated this natural talent by encouraging his son to learn the guitar and trumpet. While in high school, Richard joined a band, which soon led to Bob Keane, the president and owner of Delphi Records, inviting the teenage prodigy to an audition. From there, it was a rock and roll whirlwind of success for the California kid until the day the music died. On February 3rd, 1959, in a frozen Iowa cornfield, rock and roll suffered its first and greatest tragedy. Though his musical career was tragically cut short due to a plane crash in 1959 that also killed Buddy Holly, 
Valenzuela's songs like La Bamba and Donna still echo in popular imagination to this day. Number 3. Sonia Sotomayor This daughter of the Bronx became the first Hispanic member of the Supreme Court in 2009. Judge Sotomayor, are you prepared to take the oath? I am. Her parents were both from Puerto Rico, and her father died when Sotomayor was only nine. She set her sights on becoming a judge in elementary school, where she was valedictorian. She was also the top student at her high school. Sotomayor went to Princeton for her undergraduate degree, and then attended law school at Yale. After school, her first job was as an assistant district attorney. She became a judge in 1992, eventually working her way up to the land's highest court. I've lived a dream that so few could ever have of achieving something that seemingly was impossible. Sonia has never lost her sense of humor, graciously serving as an arbitrator of fairy tale disputes during her appearance on Sesame Street in 2012. I think you'll make a great, great judge. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Number 2. Cesar Chavez Born in Yuma, Arizona in 1927, Chavez was just a boy when his parents lost their farm to foreclosure. After that, they became migrant agricultural workers in California. Chavez spent weekends working in the fields from a young age and quit school after junior high to work full-time. In 1953, he joined the Community Service Organization, a Latino civil rights group. Nine years later, Chavez, Dolores Huerta, and other activists founded a union that would eventually be known as United Farm Workers. Caesar believed that the movement he founded had to be more than just a union that was solely concerned with improving wages, hours, and working conditions, although the UFW certainly did that. But it also needed to address the crippling dilemmas that farm workers face in the community after they came home from work. While the name changed as the group grew and merged with others over time, Chavez's use of boycotts, peaceful protests, and other innovative strategies radically improved conditions for farm workers. Caesar's message essentially was that the victims have power. The victims have responsibility to use their power to end their victim status. It is a way of saying that slave masters don't retire. The slaves have to change their minds. He died in 1993, though his legacy endures. I think what we've, we've done more than anything else, we've been able to get consumers to understand the dangers of pesticides. We've been able to get the public to understand that the workers who produce the food are the ones that really suffer the impact of those pesticides. And above all, we've been able to get a large part of Americans to understand that there are severe problems with the men, women, and children who work in the fields who produce the food we eat. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Raul Julia. This actor from Puerto Rico saw critical and commercial success before his tragic death in 1994. Has the planet gone mad? My brother, passion's hostage. I seek justice, denied. I shall not submit, I shall conquer, I shall rise. My name is Gomez Adams, and I have seen evil. Carolina Herrera. As a barrier-busting Latina fashionista, she's dressed first ladies and superstars. So I think it's very important for a woman to know what looks well on you, even if, not, if it's not very fashionable, but it looks great on you. Why not wear in it? Celia Cruz. The queen of salsa, Cruz's singing captivated audiences in the U.S. and her birthplace, Cuba. Ellen Ochoa. This trailblazer was the first Hispanic woman to go to space and run the Johnson Space Center. I must say it's a little bit hard to keep my concentration because I'm looking out the aft windows at some great views of South America right now. But uh, we'll continue to look. Eva Longoria. Not just an accomplished actress, Longoria is also a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and producer. Plus, I think women are natural producers because producing is problem solving, multitasking, dealing with crybabies, dealing, you know, it's like <laughs> babysitting other people, babysitting this argument, putting out that fire, and I go, oh, so this is what women do every day. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Selena Born in 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas, Selena's musical career began 10 years later when she and her siblings performed at her father's restaurant. When that business failed, the kids' band became the family's main income source. With Selena's brother A.B. on bass and sister Suzette on drums, the core of what would later become Selena y Los Dinos was created. Initially, Selena struggled to find acceptance in the hyper-masculine Tejano music scene, but her talent won out. Selena's debut solo album did well, as did her second. The singer's third album was a breakout success when released in 1992. That same year, her father flipped out when he learned about Selena's relationship with her guitarist, though Pops eventually apologized after the pair got hitched. Tragically, a superfan who grew close to the singer murdered Selena in 1995. Basically, what she would want to be remembered for is her music. And some of her biggest hits released after her death. Because that's what was her main source of pride and joy. However, the Queen of Tejano Music's legacy lives on through her singing and representations on screen. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.